jade was extremely significant to ancient civilizations, um, that the Spanish were very confused by it and sort of muted the jade culture um, of Central America at that time. And then it really, it really lied dormant until the 20th century with Foshag's work. And I know the exploration of a few other archaeologists and other people. And then, of course, you and your husband discovering or rediscovering uh, jade deposits in Guatemala. It's such a fascinating history. Can you tell me about the future of Guatemalan jade and, and kind of what you what you think is going to happen next? Well, it's becoming obvious that people in China and Canada and the U.S. and Mexico are discovering it as an art medium. And they're discovering that they can create beautiful objects out of jade. And it's, it's amazing to me that all the years that I spent trying to sell jade in China, that now the Chinese, some of the master carvers are carving with Guatemalan jade, which I, it's just, I'm so thrilled by it. Because originally when we decided to, bring back the jade industry in Guatemala, the idea was is that the world thought that jade was all from China. And we wanted to let people know that the jade does come from other places in the world because other places in the world have built their own jade industry like New Zealand has. And, um, and Canada's beginning to. People are beginning to realize that jade comes from Canada. Uh, but we really started the ball rolling, I think, with Guatemalan jade to make people understand that it is a source of jade and it's fine jade and it's jadeite jade and it's uh, unique and beautiful. So I think that if the government of Guatemala gets serious about protecting their jade sources, there's probably enough jade in Guatemala for about another five to 10,000 years. If they don't, it could all be gone in about five years. Mm-hmm. 